Hi, I'm Donald Brennan. This is one of my favorite places in New York, Brooklyn. From its brownstones to beautiful parks. I know the borough inside and out. From new development to resales to my neighborhood picks. So grab a smartphone or a pad and pen while I share my two cents. The Brooklyn Navy Yard is an important part of New York City history, both past and present. Ironically, so is the business I'm about to introduce you to. Kings County Distillery is the first legal distillery in New York City since Prohibition, with a history all of its own. Let's go inside and learn more. It wasn't too long ago that this type of small bat spirit making would have been illegal, considered moonshine, a term associated with high-proof homebrew spirits. But today, Kings County Distillery is on the cutting edge of a growing movement of small distillers making history of their own. So tell me a little bit about your background. So I um, grew up in Eastern Kentucky, really more the kind of moonshine part of Kentucky than the bourbon fancier part of Kentucky. It was a dry county, so there was no alcohol. Uh, there were no liquor stores. Can't even sell it in restaurants there, or at least when I was growing up. Um, so I would go to a bootlegger to get alcohol. And it was only after really moving to New York that I realized that that was pretty rare and unusual. And in fact, very intriguing to right. people who lived in New York. So I would bring that uh, moonshine back to New York City and kind of through that curiosity and enthusiasm yeah. I got interested in distilling. Got a little still off the internet, distilled <laughs> illegally for a couple years. Right. This was in my apartment in Williamsburg, right. of course, and uh, it was kind of set up, there was this kind of exterior rooftop that was pretty secluded, but it was enough to make about a half gallon every time right. I ran the still. and so. Um, there was a process of kind of perfecting the recipe and the procedure yep. and, in, and in the course of doing that actually learning what makes whiskey good. So how long were you in the uh, home distillery phase of your project? Uh, a little over two years and kind of by even by the end of that it was pretty clear that it made sense to, to at, at least apply for a license because New York State was just in the process of amending its laws around distillery licenses. Right. So when we first opened the business in 2010, we were in a 350 square foot room in Williamsburg, very small, yeah. but commercial distillery. Yeah. You know, we didn't know if people were gonna to wanna to drink whiskey made in New York. I mean, at that time, it was a very unusual concept. Sure. So once that, we realized people would be sort of curious about it and enthusiastic about it, then we wanted to move and have more space to be able to do what we wanted to do. So right. that's when we moved into this building in 2012 right. and have been very happily situated here ever since. Started in 2010, the Kings County Distillery holds the bragging rights as the oldest continuously running distillery. That's because laws still on the books dating back to prohibition made businesses like Kings County Distillery impossible. Then a change in state law opened the door for small distilleries to obtain licenses and Kings County Distillery was the first in line. What's it like being a pioneer in the small distillery world? Well, what's been most fun is to kind of share how spirits are made with people. Mm -hmm. I think for the past 10 years, uh, people are starting to question where their food comes from, who's making it, what are the values that mm -hmm. are associated with that maker. Um, and so something like whiskey, which, you know, prior to this moment, people had just sort of uh, cared a lot about the label and the brand. Now people are starting to care about the producer and the ingredients mm -hmm. and the method of production. Right. So people in other places are starting to be able to come to a distillery like this and actually learn what goes into the process. This is our tasting room. This is the outdoor part. And then okay. um, we have a little indoor area here in the gatehouse. Mm -hmm. You can come here and get a flight of whiskey. You can get cocktails. You can buy bottles at retail. Right. So it's a way to kind of not just sell the product to people, but also explain it, how to use it, how to enjoy it. Today, the independent philosophy that helped launch Kings County Distillery can also be found in its spirits. Here, classic recipes are distilled in imported Scottish copper stills. This is the main distillery floor. This is where all the whiskey actually gets made in this room. And everything begins in this white bag that's behind you. Mm -hmm. That's one ton of cracked organic corn. Right. That's the main ingredient for the bourbon and the moonshine. Mm -hmm. The other ingredient is malted barley. So that's our mash bill. Yeah. And that gets cooked up in this steel tank that's over here. Right. Fermented in these big wooden vats, which are actually built by the same company that does the wooden water towers on the top of buildings around Brooklyn. Yeah, sure. Um, so it'll ferment there for four days, and then that liquid gets pumped into these big copper stills. Mm -hmm. 
And so what the still does is it boils the liquid, and alcohol has a lower boiling point than water. Sure. So that's kind of a crude way in which we can concentrate uh, and purify the alcohol, which is really all that distillation is. Right. Yeah. So Colin, can you tell us about the different types of spirits you make here? Well, we just make whiskey, which mm -hmm. is uh, one thing that sort of differentiates us. We make an unaged version, which people call moonshine, and then an aged version of that, which is bourbon, that's the most popular right. American whiskey. And then we have a popular and controversial chocolate whiskey. Those are kind of the three core spirits that we have, although sure. we have a lot of other things in the yeah. works that are coming. You want to try some whiskey? Yeah, let's do it. Cool. So I'll start you off with um, the moonshine. Mm -hmm. This is 80% corn, 20% malted barley. Doesn't go into the barrel, so the color comes from the barrel, so the fact that it's unaged means that it's clear. That's delicious, nice and clean. Ah, yeah, thanks. Next up, I'll do the aged version of the moonshine, which is the bourbon. So this spins uh, anywhere, usually around two summers, mm -hmm. so anywhere from 18 to 24 months in a charred oak barrel. So very different flavor profile. Um, this one has notes of cinnamon and nutmeg and kind of black pepper, caramel, vanilla. That's lovely, tastes great. We've won a lot of awards for the bourbon uh, and the moonshine, both actually, over the years. There are two guilds that cover craft spirits and they have awards. And even San Francisco International Spirits Award, which is the kind of most respected spirits awards yep. we've won for our bourbons. Mm -hmm. This is kind of our most unusual spirit. This is the chocolate whiskey. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So this is actually the moonshine. It doesn't go into the barrel, but we infuse it with the husk um, of the chocolate beans. So this is what's left over after making the chocolate. Right. It's usually just thrown away or composted. Mm -hmm. We infuse it into the moonshine and it gets this really rich, dark, bitter chocolate flavor. That's pretty interesting. Takes the edge off a little bit. Well, you can mix it into a chocolate mint julep, mm -hmm. a chocolate old fashioned, or just after dinner as a dessert drink. Yeah, very dynamic. Lots of mm -hmm. different choices. Um, can you talk a little bit about the packaging? You know, pretty unique, clean, simple. I think a lot of spirits brands are kind of over branded and people at a certain point feel like they're paying for the graphic designer sure. as opposed to the distiller. So in our case, because we put so much emphasis on what goes in the bottle, mm -hmm. what was on the bottle it was designed to be muted, to not really be that flashy. And as a result, it's been very good for us because I think people pick up the bottle out of yeah. curiosity and then buy it again because they like what's inside. Yeah. Great. So Colin, what, uh, what brought you to the Navy Yard? How'd you end up here? We started in Williamsburg and the Navy Yard leasing office came to our uh, little tiny one-room distillery and sort of said, we have some space in the Navy Yard if you've ever thought about expanding. And I thought the Navy Yard doesn't exactly scream delicious whiskey, <laughs> like food products, sure. as an industrial character. Yeah. Um, but then after visiting, I, I was curious about it. It's a yeah. really cool sort of piece of New York City's history. So for yeah. that reason alone, I was sort of like, well, maybe I'll check it out. Right. And then saw the building that we're in and kind of fell in love with it. Yeah. And then thought, this, there's a way to f figure this out. Sure. And yeah. it was a really good decision for us. Yeah, seems like a good fit. So what's really exciting is the people that are moving into the Navy Yard to right. join us, uh -huh. uh, which is Pippin Brewer is coming, uh, we have Rooftop Reds, so I think in the future this will be a destination for people wanting to uh, see New York City's food culture. Kings County Distillery is indeed a pioneer and on the forefront of what is a growing movement both here in Brooklyn and throughout the state in which small distilleries inspired by creativity and raw entrepreneurship are creating the perfect blend. I'm Donald Brennan of Brennan Real Estate.